Hey, it's me, Sam. I got a really easy way for you to watch a live cast. Did you know that if you go to iTunes and subscribe to the live cast, either the high def version or the standard def version or just the audio version, if you subscribe, when there's a new episode, it will just come to you. You won't really have to do anything. You just wake up one day and you'll be like, holy crap, there's another live cast episode. I'm going to watch it right now. Support the show, go to iTunes, subscribe. If it was me, I'd subscribe to all three of them. But I don't expect everybody to do that. I'm a little partial. Will you do that for us? And leave comments too. Say nice things. We like that. Hey, welcome to Sam Livecast. It's Wednesday. I'm Sam, and it's day two of Pasta Week. Yep. I know a week implies seven days, but here on the Livecast, wait, here on the Not So Livecast, it's uh, it's only a three day week. We're live. Wait. Maybe we should call it that. The not, the, so, the not So Livecast. Not so that's fine. Maybe, like maybe we probably should talk about this because need to make. people apparently are. Some people are not are not happy with, with the name. It, yeah. This used to be completely live, and we, we we would shoot it Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at six p.m. and and it's for a variety of reasons that that just didn't it couldn't continue that way. Not the least of which is that people weren't watching live. So our effort over here was for a very, very small number of people. And, and I think people can understand that. So we shoot it now. Uh, and then we, we put it up on the, up on the internet. Um, Monday morning, Wednesday morning, and Friday morning. And so you know what? Some people still, I've seen, are, are complaining that we're like editing and stuff. But if you notice, we still start and go all the way for the talking and then we do the same thing with the cooking. I mean, it's essentially the exact same thing. Yeah, if there's any editing, it's uh, it's a cut between talking and cooking, and that's it. Just mm-hmm. to reset cameras and stuff like that. And we used to have we have intros for that anyway. So I mean, it's, it's really yeah. is the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's funny. People get used to something. I mean, oh, look, I understand that. <laughs> I understand that people get used to something and then. Well, and speaking, it's a perfect segue. Really, really quick, I just want yeah, to... Yeah, oh, yeah, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just Poor ruined your perfect segue. Out of my I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, for the people who... Oh, God, now I forgot. <laughs> you fucking hijacked my segue, and you it. have nothing to fill in its now place? I can't even think. Oh, God, you got me all flustered. Now I can't, now I can't remember. That's, sorry. God. That's Max, my son, who I will kill after this show. <laughs> and sitting beside him is Allie. Mm-hmm. Hi. She's the uh, <laughs> blogger behind Foodie Hearts. Oh. And she hangs out with us and she talks and she hopefully is learning not to do things that Max does. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck. Uh, All off right. the screen. It's her back to off the screen. Segue. No, put that fucking screen back on. No. My segue. Talking about things that, uh, changes that people don't like. <laughs> I'm a fan of Maker's Mark. I've talked about it. I've been a fan for a long time long time so last week i get this email i'm on, i'm considered an ambassador and all that means is that i've signed up for the the maker's mark um ambassadors club which means that i get presents every so often which are cool little shaker glasses uh a, a, a wax uh a crayon a wax candle and a impression thing so i could make the m with red wax on on envelopes and stuff at christmas a couple years ago and i could go there i could go to maker's mark um and see a a a, uh, barrel of whiskey with my name on it as, as one of 20 names i think it's an actual brass label black on a barrel Sam Zion is on it with other people's names, people I don't know. But we share something in common. We're all on the same numbered barrel at Maker's Mark. So I get emails every so often. And here's one that I got last week. Dear Maker's Mark Ambassador, lately we've been hearing from many of you that you're having difficulty finding Maker's Mark in your local stores. Fact is, demand for our bourbon is exceeding our ability to make it, which means we're running very low on supply. Wow. 
We never imagined this entire bourbon category would explode as it has over the past few years, nor that demand for Maker's Mark would grow even faster. You know, vodka was very popular for a long time. I mean, it will continue to always be popular. But bourbon, whiskey, scotch, things that people say they like drinking brown liquors has really like taken off. Do you think that vodka is consistently popular just because it's not too... Um, I, I think I it's, it's I think it's popular because it's a blank like, slate. Yeah. Exactly. It's so just a lot like... of people uh, can mask it mm-hmm. with with very little, you know? It's like pomegranate, juice, alcohol. cranberry. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's a what? A filler alcohol. A, kind of. I mean, I, I like vodka. I drink vodka, but... So, uh, we wanted you to be the first to know that after looking at all possible solutions, and I think Allie knows about this, so what can you imagine they have done, Max, mm-hmm. that will allow them to increase their limited supply? Let's say you have a widget factory. Yes. And supply of your widgets, uh, you, you can't keep up with demand for your widgets. Mm-hmm. What's the obvious thing to do? Increase supply. Right. Make more widgets. Yes. You'd expand the factory or yes. something, right? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what Maker Mark decided to do? Make more whiskey? I wish it was that simple, Max. <laughs> Open a new factory? No? After looking at all possible solutions, they've worked carefully to reduce the alcohol by volume by 3%. Wait. What? If you, if you, you can't see, but this says... 45% alcohol by volume, mm-hmm. which means it's 90 proof. Yes. Okay. 45% alcohol by volume. We've worked carefully to reduce the alcohol by volume by 3%. This will enable us to maintain the same taste profile, yet increase our limited supply so there's enough Maker's Mark to go around. They were going to water it down so that mm-hmm. they can distribute it better? Look how quickly you got that concept. To 42%. Turns out most of the world got the concept just like you did. (laughs) And people have been freaking out. (laughs) That's like, we're going to take take this amazing product that we've been giving you for decades. Right. And we're going to water it down a little bit.'t worry, the taste is going to be the same. I think the first bottle was made in 1958. Still family owned. And so they've never changed the recipe one time, I'm guessing, in all this. They have different versions of it. Mint julep, we've talked about mint before. Mint julep, right? And then there's another one. The mint, the mint julep, only available in one K- month out of the year in I think Kentucky. It, I think it's in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. To go there mm-hmm. So people uh, must be we've, up in we've, arms. we've both tasted it extensively, and it's completely consistent with our taste profile. Our founder, dad, grandfather, Bill Samuel, seniors created 60 years ago. They've also done extensive testing with Maker's Mark drinkers, and they couldn't tell the difference. So, it's a private company? Maker's Mark is? No, I don't think so. No, it's it's still family-owned. Well, But I think they're part of another big... The, uh, so, the family controls, like, the share? Is I, I, the, I, don't, I don't know, but it's run. It's family-run, I should say. <laughs> I, I mean I just people freak. I don't see the I don't see why a, an extremely successful company like Maker's Mark would alter their successful it seems product like a terrible rather option. than just invest in new factories. Yeah. What is the what are the limitations that are being placed on makers that makes it so know. they can't just I don't work there, expand I don't like a normal company? But here's what I here's what I found on their website today. Mm-hmm. If dear, there's somebody out there that knows what the questions I'm asking, I'd love to know. Dear friends. Since we announced our decision last week to reduce the alcohol content of makers in response to supply constraints, we have heard many concerns and questions from our ambassadors and brand fans. We're humbled by your overwhelming response and passion. While we thought we were doing what's right, this is your brand, and you told us in large numbers to change our decision. Wow. You spoke, we listened, and we're sincerely sorry we let you down. So effective immediately, we're going to reverse our decision to lower (laughs) the alcohol. Yeah, this is whoever made that decision and resume production at forty-five percent alcohol by volume, ninety proof, just like we've made it since the very beginning. Oh my god! Yeah, talk about a about face. I mean, that is brutal. Do you remember? uh, 
Was it Instagram that said they were going to start posting pictures publicly? Yeah. Yes. And everybody freaked out and then Facebook went, okay, we're not going to do that. Yeah, I think so. That's, I mean. I can't, I, I mean, it's amazing to me. That just happened. It's really interesting how um, this this reversal of decision just happened. It's interesting how instant information and instant communication technology yeah. allowed that to happen. Allowed a a widespread. I don't know that that could have happened from, thirty years ago. It could not have. Right. No, people wouldn't have had the ability to they, organize and communicate no, their views on it like they obviously are today. I find that a fascinating uh, uh, a business issue. I'm sure they'll talk about that in business schools. Some, Don't you think? Some guy was yeah. there making the decision, all right, we're either going to change the percentage or we're going to invest a lot. In it went like stuff. this. And he hey, chose the last. I got it. Former. Let's just water down the makers and we'll have more to go around. Uh, Let's do that. Oh, God, you're going to get shit for that. Well, <laughs> it's, it is from Kentucky. <laughs> I mean. Don't they talk about that? Don't they talk like that there? Is bur- <laughs> so bourbon's like the the ground zero of all whiskey. Or sorry, Kentucky's whiskey. Yeah, the yeah, ground. Yeah, it is pretty much. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how exciting! That was huge. That was huge. Hey, wait, it's new product Wednesday. Oh. I don't know where the paperwork went for this. Hold on, oh, I think yikes. I have it. Oh What is that? <laughs> you were hiding that, weren't you? Yep. This is a new tea. Are you tired of teas? This is called Tea of a Kind. Do you like that name? Yeah, like three of a Clever. kind. Tea of a Kind. Let me go go tighter on this. Let me just see so I can show you. All right. Do you want me to come out there and get a better shot? You can come tighten it up a bit. Because something cool happens that you have to, you have to see to believe. <laughs> Let's see. Ready to drink tea is the highest growth segment in consumer packaged goods. This is right from these guys. So I, I trust their. There's an average 9% growth every year in the last decade, which is 10 years, correct? Yes. Yes. There's 9%. You know how I remember that? Decade, d, d, starts with a D. The other thing that starts with a D is dime. I have to do that in my head. <laughs> Century I've got. I know that's 100 that's years, awesome. but when it comes to decade, I always have to go duh, dime, decade. Wait, wait, ten. wait. Like I don't trip, understand right? how duh means 10 in your head. Duh, duh, dime. duh. Starts with a D. So does duh, duh, oh, dime. Dime. Dime is oh, 10 cents. Duh, oh duh, decade is 10. <laughs> oh, the, oh, it's, wait, duh is two in French, right? Duh is two. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm just making okay. the sound of the letter D. <laughs> duh. Anyway, so they've decided that people want more tea. And this tea is the only brand that protects the functional benefits of fresh ingredients, antioxidants, and great taste until the moment of consumption. And do you have any idea how they do that? No. Let's no. enlighten okay, us. Okay, keep watching. So this flavor right here is pomegranate and acai. Mm-hmm. Okay? you got to keep watching. Don't go off that shot until I, I tell you. I will not. All I'm going to do... Is I'm gonna open the cap. Ready? Okay. Wait, maybe there's a oh that this is good. Okay. Ready? Wait. <laughs> Shit. Didn't work. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh. What? That's awesome. Did you see what just happened there? Whoa. So that's really cool. Maybe I'm not opening it up right, but if you back here, stay right there. Go back. I'll show you. Here's the lid. Oh. So it like injects it in. And in this lid is um is like um, vacuum sealed flavor the patented uh closure contains all of the tea of a kind's functional ingredients uh uh, i don't know and nitrogen or something i don't know what it is it's like just all like the flavor packed into a little thing right it's the flavor but it but there's something that that's like a propellant that shoots it in yeah it doesn't just trickle down it shoots it in hey go to the uh Bottom left hand drawer beside you. <laughs> I'm so yeah, it's like Oprah. Can we see I you, please? Yeah, Can we see sorry, you, please? I got excited and I reached no, before didn't. I pulled us up. <gasps> yeah. Woo. We're hooked Rad. up. All right. What do we have You're here? You're like children. I know. You we didn't. are children. <laughs> oh, peach ginger. Sorry, that's mine. <laughs> Good. Citrus mint green tea. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so do it. Sweet. Do it so we can see. 
Wait, do I have to? I have to take, take, take No, no, you're not taking anything off. There's plastic on the top. No, no, no. All it says <gasps> is, oh yeah, just twist, twist slowly. Twist slowly to open. Okay. You see? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Did it do it? Yeah, mine did it. It's oh my just not God. very colorful, mine. Oh, I see. It's mint. No, that was <laughs> yours, so cool. Yours mine like rocketed. Right, yeah. But now taste it and tell me what you think, because I can tell you what my first impression of this one was. Shit, that was really dangerous doing that near the computer. Yeah. Here. What do you think? There's like still stuff coming out of my cap. So here, do this. Put the cap back on and then do that. I once. dig it. You know I what like I like? Mine. It's not too sweet. And I yeah, definitely I taste tea. And I'm not a pomegranate fan too much, but this, and or acai. I don't even know what it is. It's voodoo as far as I can yeah. tell. Yeah. I like Good. this. What fun, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah I like it. Really All right. Cool. You'll start seeing that That's around. a cool concept. It's a cool concept. I like it. Yeah. There's only like three grams of sugar in it. Um, I'm sorry. That's good, right? This isn't mm -hmm. pure fruit and vegetable juice. I'm not drinking it. Oh, yeah, you and your new. I'm on a juice kick. He's people. from LA now. Oh, he's from I'm a LA. Juicer. You're so <laughs> annoying. I'm a juicer. It's so sorry. annoying. It's fine. No, but let me. If you're a juicer, just take my recipe: spinach, romaine, parsley, apple, lemon, ginger, kale. Beet. No beet. No beet. That's well. That's in a different. By the way, one. let me make a suggestion. Yeah. I tasted it. Uh, he's right. Take his recipe. Just don't look at it. It's green. That's the thing about the juice. It's yeah, mud, exactly. man. It looks like mud. That's yeah, the thing about the juicing people. Well, the, I actually made another one that was like kind of like an orangish reddish. It was yeah. nice. That's the green right there. That's the green. Yeah. I feel it like looks I have like to put it over ice water. for me to be able to. Drink oh, you do? Oh, that's yeah, probably not a bad idea. It's like frothy and warm. That's probably not a bad idea. No, see, our um, our, th our juicer has like a thing where you, when you pour it out, then all that froth stays behind, thankfully. Right. Well, you have a fancier juicer. Right <laughs> okay, if I told you that a restaurant that I was going to go to was in East Jesus, what would that mean to you? East, East Jesus, East Missouri. Jesus? What, 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 that, what would that mean to you? I'm guessing it's somewhere in in not on the coasts. Nobody, you don't know that expression. I've never. Oh no! <laughs> have I you ever it was heard a of city. Have you ever heard of bumfuck Egypt? Yes. yes. Okay, what does that mean? That just means nowhere, Phil. Yeah, it's so like nowhere. way the hell out, right? Right. <laughs> Same thing, East Jesus. Oh. Wait, but I've never heard bumfuck Egypt. I've yes. just heard like bumfuck nowhere. Yes, I've always heard it with Egypt attached yeah. to it. Really, I guess it just really implies. Yeah, exactly. BFE. BFE. East Jesus. Never East heard Jesus. That. Same know, thing, right? East Jesus, uh, BFE, Bumfuck Egypt, right? <laughs> How about this one? Timbuktu. You've heard that. Yeah, that one. You yeah. Posted Timbuktu. About. <laughs> so I learned something by watching the CBS <laughs> Evening News the other night. You can take my computer. Timbuktu is an actual place. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh my God. And all those people are like, I didn't please. know that. <laughs> I know all those people were giving look you where a it hard is. time. It's there in, in West Africa. It's actually, oh, it's in that. Mali. It's in oh, Mali. Oh, no wonder you saw it on the news because Mali has been all over the news. Right. But Timbuktu. Yeah. I've been saying it for years, not knowing it was an actual place. And I know people will write in and call me stupid. So call me stupid. I don't care. Hey, no. I I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> I thought it was a fake place also. But I did too. I, I thought Timbuktu was fake and I thought East Jesus was real. Yeah, you did. <laughs> what did you say? Was, you thought it was in I Missouri. I thought it was like in Missouri or something. I don't know. I was just making a joke like East, East Jesus, South Dakota. Well, check it out. When you go to Urban Dictionary, which uh -huh. is a hilarious website, yeah, if is. you look up Timbuktu, it says a city in the West African nation of Mali known for its extreme inaccessibility. Oh, oh that's great. So there you that's go. That's it. That's great. I love it. We used it. to have each other over for dinner on a regular basis, but then she moved to Timbuktu. We <laughs> yeah, haven't done it since. Literally. That's so okay, funny. So the more common usage is in the sense that we're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Who knew that it wasn't, that's that it great. was a real place? Hey, we got to get in the kitchen. We're pushing it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And my thing's going to be pretty quick. I'm making couscous. Oh, yeah. I love couscous. I love couscous. So is this like, I Can mean, I, are we making packaged couscous or? No. It's obviously a step couscous, above that. Couscous, you don't need a package for it. It's oh, way, it's way okay. too simple. Just let me talk about this for a second. We talk about mm -hmm. um, we all of all the time. Just pull it back a little bit. There you go. Uh, certified extra virgin California olive oils that you can't. Can we not have a good shot of that? There you go. That we that you just you just can't get everywhere, right? 
extra virgin olive oils right. are a scam sometimes. We olives are all California certified. They're legitimate, okay? When we first started doing stuff with we olive, I got this white balsamic vinegar. And I'm be the first to admit, I thought white balsamic vinegar was kind of a scam, sort of like white pepper. Like, I don't believe in white pepper. We're looking at that way too long. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're just about to come no, off. No, I'm just going to Wait. What are you doing? You're so funny because you're like, at times you're like, do not go off my face when I'm talking. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'll stay on your face. No, and then when, when emotions been, to it, no, I'll but go when to I've the been, thing. When I've been talking that long, it's time to come back to my face. <laughs> I know, but I didn't I'm know I'm trying to make a that. point. I'm trying to make a point. Split the screen if you want. I did but that. Jesus, we've, <laughs> seen that. that. <laughs> we've seen this stupid bottle all this time. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Yes. Last night, I mean, look at A, you can see that there's almost nothing left, right? Mm -hmm. It's only here. Mm -hmm. I've been using this like a crazy man. Last night, uh, I wanted something on the slightly healthier side as a snack. It was late. Open the cupboard. I've got canned tuna. I've got canned garbanzo beans, two of my favorite things. I go, I'll have these two together. So I put them together and I took a bite and I knew it was going to be dry. I needed something to it. <laughs> So I added some uh, olive oil to it. Mm -hmm. That definitely made it better. Then I added a little um, uh, salt and a little pepper. And it definitely made it better. But then I wanted, I wanted a counter flavor to the olive oil. I wanted a little tangy thing. So I go to reach for balsamic vinegar. And I go, if I put balsamic vinegar in this, it's going to turn the whole thing dark. And I don't want to turn it dark. Because I think it'll look like poo. I think the garbanzo beans are going to get dark and the tuna is going to get dark and it's going to look gross. So I grabbed for this. I put this in. This thing made, I'm telling you, you have no idea how much difference this thing made. Delicious, clear, right? The right amount of vinegar, the right amount of sweet because it is balsamic, a little parsley and some little cherry tomatoes sliced up. Okay, it's my new favorite thing. It's my new favorite thing. And it's because... I use the white balsamic vinegar. Weolive.com on the internet. They have stores you can go into. And if you go on the internet and it says shop now, if you put my name Sam in there, you can get 10% off anything you buy. Get some white balsamic vinegar. You won't be sorry that you use it. You can use it in pasta. You can use it in salads. You can use it in the thing that I made last night. You can use it in all kinds of things. Sauce is anything. Super delicious. Super delicious. And while we're on it, we have a couple more. We've told you, go watch... The live cast on YouTunes. Leave comments and we'll give away some YouTunes. wee olive stuff. What did I say? <laughs> you said YouTunes. <laughs> well, fuck, it should be called YouTunes. <laughs> iTunes and YouTube. <laughs> That's what it is. Go to iTunes. Uh, leave comments on the Sam live cast. Or the not so live Sam. The Sam not so the live not, cast. The not so live cast. <laughs> the not so live cast. And we're giving away a bunch of wee olive stuff. We have two more names right now. We do. And Allie. one of them is really difficult to pronounce. One of them I'm totally going to butcher. It's going to yes. be great listening to oh, her. So let's, let's hear see, it. Go ahead. Okay. U.M. Uh, Umontuan. I think you got it. That's Uim, how I would say it. Uim, oh, Uim, you and You know what? You and Umontuan might live in uh, Uim. Timbuktu. Timbuktu. Udub. And you're a winner. The other one is Aaron Magruder. Magruder. There he is, Magruder, yeah, down at the nice bottom. That one I so all you guys got to do, info at thesamlivecast.com. Send over your address and stuff so that we can get those shipped out to you thanks guys. Uh, you can always post it up on facebook or something if you want to so uh just get that to us and thank you for going and putting uh your comments there we really appreciate it okay i'm ready to cook all right let's hit it all right so here's the plan uh i've got uh water here heating it's going to come to a boil the couscous is going to go in i'll describe the amount in a second i want a little color in this so i've got some uh sugar snap peas which are so good I always have to think, yes, sugar snap peas are not snow peas. And so I'm just going to cut these into like little little pieces. Nothing uh, pretty, really. You don't have to go crazy with this. Let's see, and a little bit more. Oh, let me turn this on. I'm going to, look, if I was making like a cold little salad-y kind of thing, I could totally put these in raw, but I want to give them just a little bit of cooking first. Uh, so a little extra flavor and some color and they're gonna be perfect. So I've got these sugar snap peas ready to go. I'm gonna add a little red in the form of some red pepper. We'll just cut this vein out of. 
We cut open a red pepper the other day and it had a little baby pepper. Oh, inside. isn't it so cute? So cute. I love those little baby peppers. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be good. Let me just cut this down a bit. Okay. This water is starting to boil. So here's the, uh, here's the ratio that I use. It's pretty standard. I even keep it on the back of my couscous thing. Water, couscous, two to one. Twice as much water as couscous. So watch this, Max. Put me over there. Uh, sure, you can come over. So I'm gonna put a cup of couscous in here. And couscous, it's pasta day, week. Couscous is a grain. Water is boiling, turn it off. Stir in the couscous with just a little bit of salt. This. And now it's done. Take it off the heat and it's, and it's finished. Here, so that takes five minutes and then that's ready. So watch, kitchen timer, five minutes. That's going. Now I can put all of this stuff in here. And we're gonna give this just a little bit so it still stays crisp. But nice, a little oil. Beautiful color, getting perfect. One more thing. I'm heating this pan. I'm gonna put something in that pan in a second. But I have to make a little bit of dressing. I know, this is going fast, but fun. Olive oil. Uh, you gotta go that way, Max. I gotta get something in here. Be careful, people think you're a shitty cameraman. <laughs> Don't F up. Hold Rice, wine, pants. vinegar. Hold on. What else do I need? Rice, wine, vinegar. Soy, I have some place right here. So just a little bit of rice wine vinegar to give it a little bit of tang. A little bit of soy. Almost there. Beautiful, beautiful. Salt, pepper, nobody move. A little piece of uh, garlic in here. And I want to put a little tiny bit of ginger in too. So let me cut the sides off. I'm trying to hurry. I want this to all be done in perfect timing. That's good. Can you see? the color that's starting to get on this stuff. Look at it, how vibrant that is. That's insane. That's good, that's good. I can't stand that noise anymore. And a little bit of ginger, and just like Max said with his uh, juicing, ginger gives so much bite and uh, just a really nice little sort of peppery sharpness. And yeah, in something nice like kick. this, a really nice little kick. It makes everything so much, I don't know, fresher, you know? Mm -hmm. There is no substitute for fresh ginger. There really isn't. Okay, so this will go in. I think I'm done. Look at that, two minutes. A little dressing. Okay, this pan is now hot. Here's what I'm doing with the pan. Wait, I meant to put a little sesame oil in here. And check this out. Just a little beautiful piece of tuna, right? Oh, wow. Nice thick. We're just gonna sesame oil this. That will go in the pan, and then a little salt. It's kind of a chubby little piece, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Hot, come on. Oh, I turned it down, I turned it too far. Oh no. Damn it. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Here's my towel. Lucky wants some tuna. <laughs> I know. Please don't give him any. Hi, baby. Okay, this really, I mean, is like about a five, 
is about five minutes from start to finish. I mean, I could have had things ready, but I don't like to have things ready very often. Okay, pan. Ah, I want it just a little bit hotter before I throw it in. Pepper. That's good. This is good. This little dressing. Mm. Rice vinegar. Get some. It's really good. It's really good. Okay, 30 seconds. Shit. If I hadn't lost the heat on that, I'd be fine. Okay, I'm going to put this guy in right now. I'm going to do this. And my goal for the tuna is simple. I want to sear the outside, but I don't want to cook it all the way through. So I'm not going to. And if you look down here, if you look down here, you can see the color starting to change right at the bottom, right? Nice. All right. That's good. So here's what the looks like now. You take the lid off of the, check this out Maxi, what you got to see. See? Dry, look it, no more liquid in the bottom. So now this just gets fluffed with a fork. Perfect. And I can do this. Oh wait, so my tuna, see how much is cooked? I'm going to just turn it now. Whoa. 45 degrees. Was that 90 degrees? What was that? 45. That was 45. Okay. Okay. All in the same pot. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the vegetables in here now for some gorgeous color. And now while it's still warm, I'm going to throw on the dressing, because the dressing sort of like soaks up, I mean the couscous soaks up the dressing while it's hot. Oh my god, the smell. And now of course because I'm putting on hot, cou hot couscous, the smell just is really starting to flavor the air. Okay, this has now got to get turned over. There you go. Beautiful. Nice, right? So we always have to taste and see how it is. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I forgot about this. A little bit more salt. You gotta taste your food, right? As you go. A little bit of very pretty, gently flavored Asian couscous. Right there. Tuna off. Nice on that side. Nice on that side. You put it right here. Get my knife back. Wow. And now I just want to cut. Some little pieces. Right there. Tiny bit more. Dressing over the top. Boom. Look at that. How pretty is that? Right? Look at it. Look at that. <laughs> Damn it. I love me. I mean, I love the food. <laughs> I mean, I love it when I make something that's good. It's got good colors. 
Beautiful colors, right? Mm -hmm. The couscous by itself, the quickly cooked vegetables. Mm. Oh my God. Another tuna. Rare in the middle. Crispy on the outside. This little light dressing on it still. Okay, come on. You have to do this. This tuna was frozen a couple hours ago. Frozen. A little block of it. You don't have to go crazy. It's called a Saku block. Find it in the store. You'll be so glad you did. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We appreciate you being here. I got one more thing left on Pasta Week that you'll see Friday. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Do you want to know why? Because I don't know what it's going to be yet. But it's going to be good whatever it is. Go to iTunes. Leave us a comment. We'll give away more We All of Stuff. Thanks for hanging with us. See you next time.